Right, so I was just walking past the network cabinet a moment ago and got that horrible smell of burning electronics. Um, I was slightly worried that it was some of the networking gear, uh, but I had a, a sniff around and then I noticed that the smell was coming from here. Um, so this is one of the secondary power supplies for the security alarm. So we've got quite a lot of PIRs and other sensors and sounders in the house. So the main alarm panel can't supply all of the power to those devices. So we've got a secondary power supply here which supplies uh, some of those items. And the casework is really hot to the touch. Uh, this battery is absolutely roasting um, and there's a bit of uh, goo coming out of it as well. Um, I disconnected the battery straight away because I know exactly what it is. Um, this battery was due a change um, and I changed the battery in the main alarm panel but didn't get around to doing this one so I already had a battery ready. Um, it was only about a month ago so I'm slightly annoyed that I didn't do it when I had the chance uh, but the uh, charging circuitry clearly is uh, burnt up here so there's a resistor at the top here. I don't know how good the lighting is, you might not be able to see but there's a resistor there that's burnt out, uh, possibly taking some of the circuitry with it. Uh, but this lead acid battery is about two years old. I did mean to replace it before, uh, but clearly it's um, caused damage now. And if we have a look at the battery voltage, if you can see that, it's reading about one volt. And then, um, oh, these are still quite warm actually. The, uh, the charger seems to have gone as well, so that's outputting about 1.4 volts. So um, rather than replace this, I do want to get it up and running as quickly as possible. I haven't really got much time at the moment. Um, I think there's enough time. It's uh, yeah, it's nearly six o'clock, so I might have a quick look on CPC or Farnell and see if I can order a replacement. Um, and then when the new one comes in, we'll have a look at the new one and then we'll take this one apart and see exactly what's happened and see whether it is just that resistor. We might be able to repair it anyway and have a, have a spare unit. So here's the new power supply. I ordered it from CPC. I managed to get in before the cutoff time. So this was £35 delivered. And this is the newer model of the version that I've already got fitted, the type that failed. Uh, and it's quite a bit smaller. I think this one can only accept the 7.2 amp hour batteries. Uh, the other one could take up to 17 amp hours, I think. Uh, but the unit's considerably smaller. Um, so I don't know whether I... Um, just take out the insides and try and fit it in or whether I'll remount the whole thing uh, but on the front there's just an AC indicator and a service LED um, and then just one screw which holds the hinged cover closed. So you can see the inside is a little bit different to the one that's failed. This one has a switch mode power supply rather than the linear transformer and then the separate battery charger PCB and I think that's to meet the new standby requirements um, so that it uses less than uh, half a watt. Uh, here we have the instruction manual. Uh, I don't think there's anything too interesting in here. Um, so it's uh, suitable for one amp load current but it also uh, can charge the battery at 0 0.5 amps so um, this switch mode power supply can supply about 1.5 amps. Um, yeah and then this is this is the model so up to one 8 amp hour battery. I don't think there's anything else too interesting in here. So we can have a closer look at the switch mode power supply. So we've got the mains on the left, a MOV and then a ceramic fuse. And then on this side we've got uh, a couple of fuses. So a 1 amp fuse for the output uh, to the circuits, a 1 amp fuse for the battery. Um, and then we've got a couple of diodes, uh, the two LEDs. The resistor, which appears to be the one that's also uh, blown in the other unit. Um, so this is presumably to limit the charging current to the battery to some extent. And then we've got the terminal block. So we've got the 12 volt output, plus and minus. The supply to the battery, plus and minus. And then we've got a couple of contacts here, which connect to this tactile switch with a spring on it. Um, and that's the tamper circuit, so that when the lid's closed, it keeps the switch closed. And then when you open the lid, um, it will set the alarm off. And then we also have a little bag of accessories. So we've got um, the cable to connect to the battery, which has got a pair of um, spade terminals on. We've got a couple of adapters in case you're using a sealed lead acid battery with screw terminals. So these push onto the fast on connectors and then you can put a screw through. And then we've got a couple of cable ties here to tie down the cables coming into the casework. Right, so I've taken the cover off the power supply. Interestingly, the label says the output current's only one amp, 
but the instruction manual suggests that you can draw one amp as well as having 0.5 amps available for charging the battery. So I don't know if they're um, drawing too much, you know, expecting this power supply to survive 1.5 amps or whether this is purely to avoid confusion for the alarm fitter, just so they know this is the one amp model for supplying one amp to uh, all of the sensors and everything. So um, yeah, I don't really know. But the inside is looking fairly conventional, so this is just a standard flyback uh, switch mode power supply. Um, we've got all of the filter suppression stuff on the left here, so you know we've got a couple of filters here. We've got our bridge rectifier, a couple of 400 volt capacitors. Um, all of the capacitors in this are no-name capacitors, so we might see a failure in a couple of years' time or something if this is getting warm. Uh, but nothing too uh, surprising. So we've got our switch mode power supply chip here in a TO220 package, but it's a 5-pin version. A couple of diodes. Um, we've got our flyback transformer here. Um, our suppression capacitor for EMI bridging the secondary to the primary. We've got a TL431 voltage reference chip here. And we've got opto uh, a couple of feedback here. And then we've got a diode in a TO220 package for... Um, rectifying the AC coming from the flyback transformer. Um, a couple of different sizes of capacitors here um, and a filter so it looks like these two come before the filter um, and then uh, the um, common mode filter and then we've got another capacitor here. Um, so nothing too surprising here, I'm not going to bother taking it out because I don't think there's going to be any surprises underneath but yeah this is just a standard uh, 12 volt power supply. So it looks like inside there's no actual smarts for charging the lead acid battery in any kind of special way. Um, the 12 volts from, uh, well the 13.8 volts from this power supply is just um, going through this power resistor to limit the current to the lead acid battery through the diode, through the fuse to charge the battery and then back through the diode and through another fuse to the 12 volt supply to all of your detectors and everything. So really um, nothing very... Um, complex going on or anything like that. It's um, purely just a resistor to limit the current, which is absolutely fine for float charging a sealed lead acid battery. Um, this is just going to be trickle charging the whole time, so you don't really need to have a charge controller or anything like that, although it would be nice if it had uh, something a bit more complex so that it could detect the type of failure which appears to have occurred in the other unit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit this um, um, I might fit it into the existing case if it will fit and whether if it will trigger the tamper switch uh, because it um, is a different size. I don't really want any holes in the wall. Um, so I might just try and fit this in. Otherwise, I'll replace the whole unit and then we'll have a look at the failed device. Right, so I've taken the old transformer and PCB out, drilled a couple of holes and um, tapped them for some M3 screws. And now you can see we've got the new switch mode power supply mounted into the corner and the main supply connected up and it's all working fine um, so I managed to keep the original case work in place so that I didn't have to uh, drill some new holes and everything and feed the wires through. Right so here we have the guts of the power supply that failed. On the left here we've got quite a chunky linear transformer this is a, just a standard EI core transformer 230 volts input and 16.5 volts output so um, I'm not really sure why they've gone for this particular transformer because once you've had a uh, full bridge rectifier and a big smoothing capacitor on the AC input here, this is going to give about 24 volts onto the board um, DC. And considering the battery is 12 volts and the alarm system is 12 volts, um, I think uh, you normally float charge sealed lead acid at about 13.8 volts. That's quite a lot of power to dissipate on the regulator and, and this resistor that's blown up. So I mean I would have chosen a 12 volt transformer and then full bridge rectified that, that would give about 17 volts. That's a little bit more sensible. So I'm not really uh, sure of the design decision to use a 16.5 volt transformer uh, for the supply for this. Um, and then we have the board itself. So on the PCB we've got the AC input here, this is the 16.5 volts from the transformer which is then full bridge rectified and then um, we've got a big smoothing capacitor here. So this capacitor will see about 23.5 volts or something like that. Um, it's a no name capacitor but it doesn't really matter too much because this is a linear power supply so you're not really seeing any high peak ripple currents. And then we've got a two input NAND gate here, 
Uh, this is a Schmidt trigger input NAND gate which is being used for some voltage detection to determine when to turn on this LED and when to turn on this relay here. We've got an LM317 which is providing the 13.8 volts to the battery and the connected circuits. We've got a couple of fuses, one for the battery, one for the connected circuits, and then a read relay which is powered from um, the DC supply here and all it's doing is turning on when you've got an AC supply and turning off when you've not got an AC supply and these two terminals signal to the alarm panel whether the AC supply is present. And then all that's happening is we've got the 13.8 volts from the regulator uh, being supplied through this resistor, through the relay and through this diode to charge the battery and then when we lose power and this capacitor is discharged and it's detected that uh, there's no supply present, the relay opens up and the connected load is supplied directly through the relay. It takes a little bit of time for that relay to click in, so in the meantime those circuits are connected through this diode, so this relay is just effectively bridging this diode so you get rid of the 0 0.6 volt drop across this um, diode here so you don't lose um, you know, too much power. So that's a nice little addition which isn't on the new power supply, um, they've just gone for the two diode approach and nothing else. And then we've just got the two indicator LEDs here, one to indicate that the AC supply is present um, and then one to say there's a fault. But uh, yeah, it didn't pick up that there's no fault and clearly what happened is as those sealed lead acid batteries get quite old they start to draw more and more charging current and it got to the point where this resistor couldn't dissipate all of the power. So that probably wouldn't have failed if this had been supplied with a 12 volt transformer instead of a 16.5 volt transformer, um, or it wouldn't have failed so soon anyway. But it's slightly annoying that the indicator LED didn't say there was a fault because um, basically I forgot that I'd bought a new battery um, so I didn't end up fitting it. So I'm slightly annoyed that I didn't do it at the same time as changing the one in the panel, uh, but it's all working now. Uh, but yeah keep on top of maintenance of those sealed lead acid batteries in your alarm system otherwise when you have a power cut the alarm siren's going to go off outside and annoy the neighbours and everything. Uh, but anyway there'll be some more videos coming up soon, uh, bear with me I'm a bit short on time but uh, if you enjoy this video give a thumbs up and thanks for watching.